uh, we're going to go ahead and, um, and, and jump into this great presentation. Um, thanks for joining both um, the Texas Chiropractic Association as well as Chiromatrix for, for today's presentation. My name is Megan Woodburn. I'm serving as the Interim Executive Director for the Association and happy to have this partnership with Chiromatrix. Um, today, we are, um, we are very excited to have um, Alejandro Lopez with us from Chiromatrix. He is a um, Chiromatrix Senior Account Executive and has spent three years helping small and medium-sized businesses achieve their marketing and business goals through the innovative website and design and the strategic marketing efforts. He's also well-versed on online marketing principles, advanced optimization, and paid search strategies. He makes it a prior priority to help clients drive new business growth and increase client retention and promote um, office efficiency. We are um, thrilled to have um, him speaking with us today and we'll go through the presentation. As you guys have um, questions for Alejandro, please put those in the Q&A box and we'll address those at the end of the presentation. Um, also, before he gets started, I just wanna make one other highlight is that we um, are planning on hosting our uh, Cairo Texpo conference this um, June, um, June 11th through the 13th in Allen, Texas, and it's actually going to be live. We'll have both live and virtual options if people want to attend um, in, in either um, facet. So be on the lookout for some communications about that. But with that, i um, super excited to have you here today, Alejandro. So go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thank you, Megan, uh, for the introduction. And, uh, and for, for the most part, I just want everyone who is joining to understand that this is primarily educational. These are things that you could technically be able to implement after uh, everything that we'll be discussing. So uh, I'm gonna skip through a little bit about myself. I think Megan did a great job of covering me, but if you wanna put a face to who is speaking, this is me here. Um, but I do wanna spend some time a little bit about discussing Cairo Matrix and who we are, because I think it's very important for some of you who may not know us or who are currently utilizing us, just the capabilities that we have uh, because believe it or not, I, I've been with this company for almost four years, and, and I could say that, you know, being in the, being in this agency, that some even uh, clients of ours still don't know all the capabilities that we have. So this is also a good opportunity for those of you who are utilizing our product to be able to get an understanding of what we're capable of. So the biggest thing about us is that we are uh, a marketing agency that is full scale. I mean, we primarily focus on our bread and butter, which is our websites, and then we really extend the SEO into the digital marketing. And the biggest goal for us is to connect make patient relationships with clinics like yourself. So our job as an agency is to connect those two dots so that you guys can ultimately be helping more people. Um, so we've been doing this for almost 18 years, something that we're very proud of. We're very big, we're big believers in the chiropractic industry. And in fact, I think it's safe to say that we've been leading this industry for almost 18 years. And we were one of the first agencies that were preaching about the importance of having a and some of the things that we were saying almost 10 years ago couldn't have been more relevant now. So what I have set up for you guys here is just an example of a client, or excuse me, not a client, someone who is actually inquiring and making a transition. And um, I wanna use this example because I think it's important to see uh, exactly where there's areas of opportunity and also understand um, if you're a busy clinic and you kind of have put this in the back burner and you haven't really taken the time to make updates to your online presence or overall marketing, um, maybe this might get you an understanding to think about some of the things that are happening and how people are engaging, how, why it's necessary. So the first thing that I like to do is really get an understanding of what your website looks like. So whenever we think about websites overall, this is your foundation. Think of it as the seed of the tree. Uh, you know, when you're, you're planting, if you're a gardener, if you like plants overall, this is the root. And this is very important whenever you think about how, how Google engages. Now, this is a perfect example because there's a lot of trigger points here that I think are important. One is that right here on the top left, this website is not secure. So that's actually a very big problem for Google. That means consumers who are going on the largest search engine in the world, which is Google, they are searching up and they were to select this website, there's a risk for them. So anybody who's about being on non-secure websites might have second doubts, uh, but even Google will read this information and not give you priority. Now, if your website has a non-secure link up here on the top left, that's actually an issue and it's something you guys should take note about um, and remind yourselves to get that fixed. 
second thing that I want to point out is if you're still using Adobe Flash Player, that is something that is outdated. It's not supported anymore by Google. So if you still have that on your website, that's actually a red flag um, for Google as well. The goal is that you want to be able to really play this, the system of Google in the sense of what they consider best practices. And the website overall is going to be a big player in the quality score, how they grade and whether or not they're going to find you resourceful or, or legitimate enough to give you traffic. And whenever I look at this website as well, I don't think there's enough marketing on here in terms of what they could be doing to really showcase and convert. A Another problem that I don't see or that I see here as well is there's no backlinks for social media. So I don't see any, anything about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or any other social media platform besides Yelp. Uh, in fact, what I would have encouraged is actually pushing reviews for Google first than Yelp, because I think Google reads those, they consider their review management system before they'll think about Yelp. The other thing as well, if you go through this website, there's only one tab on all the services here, and then she has this information. But if you click on it, this is all duplicate information that she had mentioned she was receiving from a featured article system that they were utilizing. So it's actually not even helping her for SEO purposes uh, because it's all duplicate. Anybody who's using their content information is using the exact same wording. So it's being read by Google in a very similar fashion, nothing with custom content, which is what Google would prefer. So I just wanna keep, keep this in mind as well that the website is just as important as the marketing. Um, and so I just wanted to give you guys a few tips on understanding that the website should be secure the website should be mobile responsive, which is something I'm going to show you guys right now. So you can see how well it looks like. So this right now, anybody who utilizes a cell phone, this is what their website is going to look like. And what that means, it's going to load slow. It's not going to be user friendly. Um, it's going to frustrate people. Um, and right now in the area that we're in, most of us are accessing information through our cell phones, including myself. Um, so whenever you think about engagement and the way that people are behaving, it's important to also target that audience of individuals who are accessing information through their cell phone. So the website needs to be formatted that way. Um, Google has actually put out a curriculum in 2013 where it's actually been a requirement on their end where you guys should actually have a mobile responsive website. So if you don't have a mobile responsive website or don't have a website at all, you're definitely missing out on, on, on an opportunity for Google to recognize you and to consider you for traffic. Now, one thing that I want to talk to you guys about that's important as well is just overall how you guys are utilizing social media. So social media is a consumer engagement platform. By all means, you can advertise and advertise on it as well. But what would, would rather you guys utilize it for is just to engage with your patients, your community. Um, one thing that I wanted to show you guys about this web or this client specifically, or this example, is that they don't post frequently. I do like the posts that they're putting on there, but they don't post as much as they should be. Google is, as a corporate agency, enough to actually track your engagement on social media. And in fact, it's one of the 200 factors that they consider whenever they decide your SEO rank, your visibility. So because there isn't frequent posting um, on the, the social media aspect, that's something that we encourage for all of our clients to be utilizing because it's super important in fact, you could be doing really creative things on Facebook. Uh, you could take on education, maybe resharing a published article that talks about the importance of, of Google, or excuse me, of chiropractic. Um, then you could also be showcasing stories um, from patients who have had success journeys with you. And because I think it's important to recognize that, uh, you know, most of us dealing with problems that don't understand that chiropractic can also be a solution. So whenever you have that special patient who's coming into your clinic, you know, they've had this journey prior to you when they were dealing with standard medical care, whether that was through prescription drugs or just um, some sort of other avenue until they found you and you made their life, you made an improvement. I think it's very important to remember to showcase that and because it, it resonates with people. It's one, in, in essence, from a business perspective, it is free marketing, but I think from a satisfaction level, it kind of reminds each of you who are in this industry why you guys decided to join chiropractic and why you're choosing to help people. The other thing that we like to see as well on social media, and I think it's very important for those who are social savvy, um, if you aren't, it's I think that if you have maybe someone in your office who can help you with, is posting videos. And you know, you can put a pic, if you don't want to do the videos, you could always post 
pictures um, and just kind of educating people about chiropractic because I think it's important to let people know also why uh, maintaining a chiropractic lifestyle can overall improve your health. And it just really it allows you the opportunity to showcase yourself as well and what you specialize in. Um, Cause I think there's so many avenues in chiropractic cause even though there's a core foundation for each one of you, I think everyone in some sense operates differently. So it's important to showcase that, especially in a community that has many chiropractors, there needs to be a, an avenue where you can stand out and be distinguished among your competitors, so to speak, or your colleagues. So if you're utilizing Facebook um, and you aren't posting frequently, I highly encourage you guys to be more engaged. We're in a very social media era right now. And um, the best part about this is that it's free. I mean, you just simply have to put in the time and dedicate the work to, to put engagement for your community and on your social media platform. The third thing that I wanna show you guys is something that I think always gets, for the most part, ignored and it's how accurate your information is. So whenever we think about us and what we've been able to develop with Google, something that they shared with us is making sure that all of your information is consistent and uniform across the board. So Google, I wanna remind you guys, isn't a human being, they are artificial intelligence. They base their judgment on, on strictly on your information. So when I ran a report um, for this example here, we saw 78% listings in Accra. So this is letting me know that across the board, the name of your business, the address, and the phone number is not consistent. So we have the top six players right here, and then we have other major listings here that are fairly popular. So this is actually a big problem. So I, I always bring this up to individuals because I think it's important to think about your information and where it's listed online in the internet, one, and two, to be consistent and uniform. So if you don't, if you have a listing inaccuracy of this high of a percentage and you're aware of this, um, you're not gonna rank high on Google. You're not gonna get priority until you fix this. Uh, so for example, when you look at here for Google Chiropractic Neurology Center, and then you go down here on Bing, even though um, we both know that this is the exact same person at the exact same clinic, Chiropractic Neurology Center, something as simple as the address as you can see, there's two differences here. It's gonna read through Google's system as two different entities, even though they're the exact same person. So, and that goes to say for even city search right here, even though uh, Dr. Karen is the practicing practitioner here, it's reading it as a different person. So that's why it's important to make sure that all of your information is consistent. Um, and I think I would say this is probably one of the most ignored uh, behind social media, because I know some chiropractors that I spoke to are not a big fans of social media but it's something that we really should for, especially in the era that we're in now. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into something that I wanna to talk to you guys about when it comes to Google system. So I'm gonna start with chiropractic near me. I think maybe some of you guys may have known of this keyword. It's a very general, key, uh, general keyword, it's very popular, uh, but then I will talk to you about something that's more relevant than chiropractic near me. But I think to safely present to you the system of Google, I think this is an easier starting point for you guys to get an understanding of it. So for chiropractor near me, we have three sections um, in the area, which would be Long Beach, California. So this is what's showing up on the first page of Google. And we're gonna scroll all the way to the very top and we see these two advertisement sections here. So the Google Ads section is a really strategic area um, because you can actually manipulate what type of patient you're looking to attract. So the goal here is to really pick specific keywords that are beyond just chiropractor near me. Um, so we're, we're talking about conditions, we're talking about symptoms such as back pain, neck pain, headaches, migraines, uh, whatever the case may be in terms of what you really specialize in. It could even be services like spinal decompression, nutrition, um, but overall this top section up here is gonna be the fastest way to get traffic. So if you're in a position right now where um, you're not necessarily you know, seeing the, the amount of patients that you could be treating, you have more time on your schedule than you typically uh, do, so to speak, this would be the area to be running and advertising because it's gonna get you the fastest growth. Now it is a pay to play situation. So you are bidding for specific keywords. Um, so you have to be very strategic on choosing those words so that way you are not burning your pocket. Um, but you also wanna make sure you're taking the necessary conversion factors so that what you are investing, you are getting a return from. 
So when we think about that, uh, one thing that you would want to be doing if you're an individual who currently is now running a Google ad or thinking about running a Google ad, you wouldn't want to create a landing page. Um, based off the statistics that Google has shared, something that we've realized is that if you were to run a Google ad campaign here, and then some, this link directs it strictly to the website. It doesn't convert as fast as if you were to strictly take it to a landing page and give that consumer all the information necessary and give them the confidence to understand that they selected the right advertisement. And that's what these landing pages are used for. So that gives them enough information, lets them know, also introduce other chiropractic services beyond just chiropractor near me. Give them information. This is an advertisement example on an auto accident. And as you can see here, gives some information on whiplash treatment. The other thing you would want to do, because I think it's important from a business model perspective, is, is being able to track all this information. So if you are running a Google ad on top of creating a landing page, it's also important to include a call tracking number so that whenever those patients are calling into your office and they are being scheduled out, you can track whether or not the Google ad campaign has been successful or is the one that's actually generating you the traffic. So that's something that we highly encourage. Another thing down here is gonna be more information. You could even throw in some testimonials so that this individual give them more confidence and be more inclined to choose you uh, as the chiropractor that they need to see. Include a map. I think it's important to also remind people where you are located. Uh, again, especially if someone is utilizing a mobile phone, um, they're really gonna take a look at this address and see how far it is from where they're located. You could even throw in there as well, the hours that you're, uh, that you're open, and then lastly, punch in with another call tracking number. So this is a really specific conversion factor example of what you would want to do if you are running a Google ad campaign to have the ultimate success in terms of conversion and then actually coming into your office and calling your phone as well. The catch with the Google ads, just like everything that we do in life, there's gonna be some cons, um, is that it's just not as sustainable. So I just want to be transparent for any, every one of you guys who are running Google ads on your own right now independently or who have done it in the past is that while it is a really strategic way to run Google ads to get traffic, especially if you're a new practice, this is actually another example to keep in mind too. If you're in a, a new community where no one knows you and you know, you're kind of not necessarily a pillar of the community just yet, but you want to put your name out there, this is also another great campaign for brand awareness. So not only just from an example of driving traffic, but from an example of, I want business to know my name, my clinic, and, and what we have to offer. So that's also another great strategy. Now, going into the middle section here, is gonna be the map. Now the map is a little trickier than both the Google Ads section and the SEO section. And I say that because it's a little bit harder to manipulate in comparison to the other two. Um, and the reason why is that there's only three factors that allow you to be here. Um, two of them you can kind of uh, tweak around and the last one, you just, neither myself or anybody that works in the digital marketing space can really do anything about it. It's just something that we just don't have a control of. The first factor, what's gonna get you on this map is how accurate your listings are. So I wanna revert, revert back to this listing report right here. And she has a 78% inaccuracy She's likely, just based off this report, prior to even going into the first page of Google, I was kind of, a, I could have already assumed that she was not going to land on the map because Google is not going to give her priority because she has a lot of red flags. Uh, so they run a risk. So when we think about Google as well, another thing to whenever, because this is how we're basing most of our digital space uh, in terms of the engagement and most of the searches are happening on Google since they're the largest platform. Another thing to kind of keep in mind about is that Google as a company, all they really care about is giving you and I the information that we want. And at that, they want to make sure that we're having a pleasant experience, a great customer experience on their platform while doing that. So, for example, Dr. Karen's listing has a 70% inaccuracy. She's not going to be chosen here on this map area because they see that she runs a risk for their consumers. So they're going to favor people who have accurate listings, which are these top three individuals. And the second factor that they're going to favor on who makes it to this map area is how many reviews you're generating. So I also want to take a moment to talk about reviews for anybody in here uh, who hasn't taken the time to be initiative, be, be proactive in taking initiative about reviews. 
is just how important they are from not only from a Google perspective, but from a branding perspective. And I, I speak to a lot of chiropractors um, and I've heard a lot of stories and a lot of reasons that I guess could in some sense make sense why they haven't been proactive about it. But I, I want you guys all to take into account that there's a lot of happy patients that are leaving your office either yesterday or this beginning of the week or even last week that just walked out of your office without sharing their experience, uh, how amazing your work has been, especially within your community. And that's what these reviews are doing. They're, they're share these are patients who are sharing experiences with you. Uh, hopefully all of them are positive. I understand we're not perfect. Um, and they're sharing those clinical experiences with you. And we wanna make sure that they're getting that feedback and they're sharing it online because it makes you more marketable, it makes you more accessible for Google because there's more feedback about your clinic and that's gonna, what's gonna allow you to be on this map area in general. So reviews are very important and your listings are very important. Now, the third factor that comes into play here is gonna be the proximity search. And that's just something that you and I just don't have a control of. And what I mean by this is uh, I could be on East 10th Street typing in chiropractic near me. It's gonna pull me from that map area if I'm in Atherton East Street, it's gonna pull from that, that map area and it's gonna find show me the closest chiropractors. So that's just something that we don't have control because you and I both don't know in that moment in time when someone's gonna type in chiropractor near me. But the, the other two factors that I want you guys to remember about is gonna be being very proactive about the reviews and then being proactive about how accurate your information is. And we're looking at 45% of clicks coming from this top section here because it's the most manipulated. And then 20% from just the map alone. And then the last 35% of clicks are gonna come from the SEO section. Now, SEO, the SEO stands for search engine optimization for any of you guys who are completely unaware of what that means. Um, and what this boils down to is just content. One of the easiest way to think about your website or to think about your online presence overall is think of it as a library. The more information that you put on your website, the more relevant and resourceful you will be for Google. So you want to be writing content on not just chiropractor, but chiropractic on those specific words. You want to be writing content on back pain, neck pain, lower back pain, headaches, migraines, um, if you're a pediatric chiropractor, you wanna be writing content on that, um, spinal decompression, laser therapy, just you wanna be very diverse in the content that you have on your website because that's what's gonna deem you more resourceful for Google. They're gonna see your website, they're gonna read it uh, through their Google spiders is what they call it. And they're gonna see, wow, this practice here has a ton of content. I'm gonna drive traffic to this website because this website for us does it run a risk in comparison to a, a website example that I'm showing you here for chiropractic neurology that doesn't have that. So SEO is primarily content. It's also gonna be user time spent. So making sure that the content that's on the website is engaging. So that's another thing I wanna touch on for you guys who, who are writers and who do spend time blogging and being able to you know, write information on your website and update. So we're kind of in a different era in terms of competition. So Google has now made it difficult for people to rank on the SEO part because not everybody's following what they consider best practices. And so what they've realized is those individuals who are, who are indexing, and that's making sure that they're coding all the information and who are attaching keywords that have high, high volume in their community, they're giving them priority. So it's not your typical day and age now where you could write a content piece on back pain and then just blog it and post it on the website. It's going on the back end and coding everything for making sure that the SEO roadmap opens up easily for these Google spiders, because these Google spiders need to get to a destination with a millisecond. So making that process easier for consumers is what Google is going to care about. The other thing as well is whenever you are writing content, for those who are writers, keep in mind you don't need to be writing a PhD essay by any means. You don't need to write crazy scientific keywords because that is just not what the general population is, is going to be typing in. You need to be very specific on the keywords that you choose. You want to choose keywords that have high volume within your community and your zip code area uh, because it doesn't make sense to be writing content on keywords that no one's typing in in your community. Uh, and that's something also that you would want to keep in mind. The other factor is about SEO that you want to take into account is that while it does take time, 
it is an, uh, an area that is way more sustainable than Google Ads, where you are going to be reaping the benefits once you put in the work. So it can take, and this is just being transparent across the board with anybody here who is in a position of, of you know, doing a little bit more, more about SEO is anybody that tells you that you can get to the first page of Google within a month or two or even three or four is absolutely lying to you because that's just not possible even for companies who work with Google. It's just not something that's feasible. The truth is, is that it just takes time because Google as a company wants to make sure that you're consistent um, and that you're reliable and that the information and the content is pertains to the industry and the keyword that you're typing in. So think of it like a credit score for all of us who, who have worked on it, understand that it just takes a length amount of time to get to the point where you want to be. And that's how SEO is going to work as well. But once you get there, once you make it to the finish line, you're patient enough to get to where you want to be on the first top spot, the keywords like chiropractor near me, then you're pretty much at a very sustainable position where it's hard to remove you um, on the top position unless someone outworks you. And that's just what it would boil down to. So in this position here, for example, the top three links are gonna get 70% of that 35% of clicks overall on the first page of Google. So these top three links are gonna get the most clicks. This is a directory listing. Most people will click on this, not sure if they will actually convert the most to be honest, because it's gonna give them a variety of options. It's gonna make it too difficult for people to make an immediate decision. Um, especially since Yelp is primarily a review management system, there's already a practice here who has 181 reviews that could be already a likely player to be selected. So the ones that we would have to be worried about the most is going to be these top two right here. This is a corporate company. Most people disregard the joint. They don't provide necessarily the most quality care. Um, they're pretty much a turnover company. I think a lot of people know that. Um, but someone who would be, in her case for Dr. Canning, that she would technically be competing with would be this practice right here, this private practice, which is still getting clicks because he's in the top three. So I want to show you other keywords are important because I know that I want you guys to take into account the chiropractor is just a general search. Uh, in fact, what we want to come from our standpoint as well is this is where an example of back pain relief near me comes into play. So I imagine some of you guys who've been in this industry for some time can understand that anybody who is dealing with problems, or at least understand or could relate at some point, that someone who's been dealing with pain problems, whether it's back, neck pain, headaches, migraines, knee pain, whatever the case may be, you know, the first thing that comes into their mind is not chiropractic at all. Um, in fact, most of what's happening, what's been shared to us is most of these individuals who are dealing with pain problems are actually going online and researching and finding looking for the practitioners just like you who could be healing them, but they don't know automatically that chiropractic is a solution. So the way that we would want to approach this is a standpoint of education is educating these patients, not only within your office, but educating them online that chiropractic is also an option. So for back pain relief, as you can see in comparison to chiropractor near me, there's only two people who are running an advertisement. But whenever we think about back pain, you have several other businesses who are running them. Not all of them are chiropractors. There is obviously an MD, but we have a chiropractor here. It looks like a chiropractor here. So I just want you to keep that in mind is that even people outside of the chiropractic space understand just how important it is to educate people on the symptoms that they're dealing with and what options they have. And that's why there's more advertisements happening here. This middle section, as you guys both, you guys already understand how, what it takes to get here. Being, addressing back pain relief near me is in an area where your reviews are sharing what you're doing with their, their issues, whether it's back pain, it's gonna help you manage your back a little bit. That's the only added point I wanted to add. But what I really wanted to cover with you guys is this last section here. As you can see for back pain relief near me, it's mainly Yelp, Yelp. And then there's an orthopedic place. There's one chiropractor that's popping up. And it's just practically surgeons. And this is pretty much across the board with anything that deals with neck pain, back pain, headaches. You primarily see a bunch of medical doctors or orthopedic surgeons who are taking um, a proactive approach about the engagement of consumers, which is understanding symptoms and educating them and putting that extra work to make sure that they're the selected uh, healthcare option rather than someone who could be seeing a chiropractor. Um, and I guess what I'm trying to say is 
Uh, I, for some reason, chiropractors have not taken that initiative to take an educational standpoint of uh, back pain, neck pain, headaches, whichever case may be, on uh, what symptoms and conditions you want to prom promote the most. Something that you will see across the board from orthopedic surgeons as well. So I, I just want to make that aware. As you can see from here, there was only one chiropractor that popped up across the board in comparison to like orthopedic surgeons. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to bring into account here about SEO and, and, and symptoms as well is that if you're in a position where let's assume that chiropractors are all ranking really well for back pain relief, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to target back pain relief because it is a common um, condition that you guys are treating. You could always target more diff different words that pertain to you. And that's what makes digital marketing so inviting for everybody is that while we have competitors who are probably doing well in specific keywords in your community, assuming, um, you could still outcompete them in different keywords that would pertain. And it's just really about being marketable, being more accessible and taking the initiative to help people find you but that's not gonna happen if you're not taking the necessary steps uh, to do something online or do something digitally for people to have you as an option. So now I'm gonna kind of revert back guys to a few things I wanna talk about. If there are any questions, um, I know we had a couple of things that we talked about um, throughout the presentation. Just wanna make sure I'm giving you guys the opportunity to answer any questions that you guys might have. Great. Alejandro, at this time, we don't have any questions, um, but I'll save any that we do get to the end of the presentation. Okay, no worries. Well, anybody who tuned in, I just want to share this before uh, we're wrapping up. And I just want to say thank you guys for joining. Uh, also, Megan, again, thanks for inviting us. Uh, I just want this to be super educational for you guys um, and just kind of take initiative on your end, if especially if it's someone on y'all's end that likes to be very hands on about things. We are offering. Um, and a more, a more specific, detailed, in-depth evaluation if you are interested so we can dive in deeply into your practice. Uh, we're also extending promotions for being TCA members uh, with no setup costs. And my contact information, um, this is my email, my direct email if you want to reach out to me, have any independent questions. Even if they're just questions and you're not looking for any evaluation by any means, please send them over. We are big supporters of the TCA, so we're more than happy to assist you even on questions. This is also my direct line. If you would rather get a hold of me, you can even text me on this phone number. Um, other than that, guys, I'm, I hope this was very helpful. Um, if you are interested in a more scheduled, personalized marketing consultation, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you guys. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, we got one question um, from a doc that says, I have duplicate accounts, of, I have a duplicate account with Google Maps. How do I fix it if there isn't, um, how do I fix it so there isn't this and it's impacting the, the office? That's actually a really great question. Um, so I'm assuming it's probably like, let's assume it's like Dr. Brian and then it's another Google My Business account that's probably like Brian Health Chiropractic. These are just examples when I'm assuming it's probably happening. What he needs to do or this or she needs to do is they need to get rid of one of them pretty much is what it's going to boil down to. You need to have only one Google My Business account because even though it's the exact same person in the exact same clinic, um, it's going to read as two different practices because there's two different accounts. And the way to do that is if you still have your username and password to your Google My Business account, you should be able to deactivate one of them. I would definitely deactivate the one that has the less reviews as well, because what could happen is, let's assume that Dr. Brian is one of them and then Dr. Brian Healthcare Chiropractic, let's say Dr. Brian has the better positive reviews and then the other one doesn't, you could actually change the name of Dr. Brian to Brian Health Chiropractic. So I would choose the one that has the best reviews and the better placement. If you need me to explain that as well in a different fashion, I'd be more than happy. Yeah, they, they mentioned that they have an office and account, but they also made separate accounts for the doctors. So if that gives you any additional information. Yeah, and that's, and that's why I imagine happened is probably the doctor's name and then the actual practice name. And that's, that's we see that sometimes. Uh, I would definitely encourage just to have one um, unless they're in a position where they're, they're a, a clinic that has multiple locations 
and some of these doctors are working independently, um, then of course it's up to their discretion to how they want to promote their their patient experience. Um, so I've seen that before as well. Um, but if it's possible, if there's a chance where they could just have one Google My Business account, that is going to be your safest bet. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Absolutely. And and at this point, I think you've you've answered so many questions that and, and given such a great presentation that there's no other questions. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, yeah. To everybody who's on the this call, thank you so much for participating today. We will be record. We have recorded this presentation, and we will be sending it out um, in our weekly newsletter um, on Friday. So feel free to uh, to watch it again there. We also um, want to just remind people to stay in tune with um, information about our upcoming events, um, specifically Cairo Expo that will be happening in person in June because um, we were excited about having everyone um, back together for, with the um, chiropractic community. But we appreciate you um, being here today. And we also appreciate um, the Cairo Matrix team for um, their support of the association and also um, uh, putting together this awesome presentation. So thank you yeah. guys and feel free to reach out to us at info at t, um, chirotexas.org if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you guys. Have a great day.